Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, so we continue to revel in the risen Christ. The fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. So we hear something from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel about Jesus being our Good Shepherd. Whenever we come to this day, in my mind, immediately two images come from my own life. The first one comes when I was a seminarian, and I studied and lived in the Holy Land. And I was walking outside of Bethlehem one day, and I came upon a Palestinian shepherd watching a, shop, uh, a flock of sheep. It was about 110 degrees, and all of these sheep were gathered underneath a tree to try to get some shade. And one of the sheep began to wander away, and I watched the Palestinian shepherd, and I thought, I'm going to see the good shepherd in action. He's going to go after the one lost sheep, lovingly carry it in his arms back, and bring it back to the flock. And I watch the shepherd, and he's looking on the ground, and he finds a well-shaped stone, and he throws it with great accuracy, hits the sheep, and the sheep runs back to the flock. And I say, please, God, don't be like that. Don't let Jesus be like that for us. It feels like it sometimes, but that's not what our Lord is like. Thanks be to God. The second image comes from the parish I served prior to here in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, at Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I was just learning Spanish, and on Good Shepherd Sunday, I had a homily all prepared about how Jesus is el buen pastor. The buen pastor is the good shepherd. And I love the word pastor, pastor. It's the same in Latin and Spanish. It's the word for shepherd. So the role of a pastor is to try to emulate or follow Jesus as our good shepherd. Well, I had this great homily in my mind. I was speaking without notes, trying my Spanish out. And I was going to talk about how Jesus is a trustworthy pastor, el buen pastor. He's good, he's bueno. And that means that you can trust him. That means you can follow him wherever he takes you. It means that you can listen to whatever he says to you and then do it. Because he's good, he loves you, he will take care of you. That's one thing we know about our God. Our God loves you and our God will take care of you. That means that our response is, I can trust that. And we have to practice that to learn how to do it better and better. But your God loves you. Your God will always take care of you. So in my homily, I'm talking about how Jesus is, is el buen pastor. And the word for sheep, I say all of us are the sheep and we can follow him because he's good. And in Spanish, the word for sheep is oveja. But I got my words confused. And instead of oveja, I kept saying that we are the conejo. Does anybody here know what a conejo is? bunny rabbit. <laughs> so I give a whole homily about how Jesus is the good shepherd and we're all the bunny rabbits. <laughs> and just like bunny rabbits do, you know, they follow their shepherd. And the more I went into the homily, the more the people were laughing and I thought, I'm not very funny in English. I must be funny in Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think about that in my own life and how Jesus is a good shepherd Today, we also celebrate around the world a World Day of Prayer for Vocations. And it makes sense because if the Good Shepherd calls us, we respond. The Good Shepherd is good. That means you can trust the Shepherd. That means to whatever life he calls you, you can trust that. It will be very, very good for you. He loves you. He will take care of you. So on this day, we pray for all vocations, but especially vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, the consecrated life, brothers, deacons, sisters, we pray for that. And I especially pray for that from right here in our parish family. I see many young people, and in them I see the call of God to serve their church and serve the Lord, possibly as a priest or a sister. And my fear is that there are so many other voices in our world that attract us that we don't hear the shepherd calling us. So on this day, let's pray that those to whom God is calling will be able to respond. Today, our bishop also asks us to do an annual appeal for our diocese. And our bishop is using the image of the Good Shepherd because he's asking of us to especially respond as someone who wants to follow Jesus. And I said this to you last week. Our bishop says, I don't care about the money part. I'm not even going to talk about that. What I care about are the first three parts of his appeal. And those parts are prayer, where I dedicate myself to try to listen to the voice of the shepherd. Study, I want to be formed as a shepherd. 
So I'm going to take some time to study or to read a book or to do a Bible study or do something I normally wouldn't do. Watch a program on television that's going to edify me instead of lead me astray. And service. Our faith has to be expressed in service. Lastly, as I've been thinking this week about the Good Shepherd, I picture Jesus sitting, speaking with me and speaking with us. And what struck me this year, more than any other year, there is no audition for us to become a member of his flock. By our baptism, he claims us. That means he knows us by name. It means he calls us. We are his. We belong to him. Now, I love that there's no audition. That means that the requirement to be a member of his flock doesn't mean you have to be good instead of bad. It doesn't mean that I have to practice my faith instead of not. It doesn't mean that I have to be clean instead of smelly like sheep are. It doesn't mean that I have to be smart and have it all together or maybe not be so smart like sheep tend to be sometimes. None of those things matter. To us it matters because that's how we judge other people and that's how we tend to judge ourselves. We have to put that aside because we have a shepherd who says, you know, I don't care where you've come from and I don't care what you're doing. I just care that you're mine. Because you're mine, I'm willing to lay down my life for you. I'm a good shepherd. I'm willing to give my life for you. I want to call you by name. And all I would love is for you to respond. So lastly, I picture Jesus looking at me and looking at us, and he says, you belong to me. You belong. And then he looks us in the eye and he says, you. Can you say amen? amen? I would ask you to pass down your cards that are at the end of the pew. Our bishop has asked us to ask you to make some commitments to be a follower of the Good Shepherd. And we ask every family to fill out one. If you are visiting from another parish in our diocese, please fill this out, take it back, and turn it into your own parish. If you're visiting from some other diocese, you're welcome to fill this out and either take it home and stick it on your refrigerator so you can remember, or take it home and turn it into your bishop. I bet he'll appreciate it. I'm going to ask you to fill these out now, and we're going to turn them in. And I would just say the pamphlet that our bishop sent to you on the front says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then in here the bishop talks about his appeal and his asking of you. I'm just going to tell you how I filled out my card. Go ahead and fill out yours and we'll pass them in in just a moment. The first part is through prayer in my spiritual life. I promise to pray privately at least 15 minutes once a day. And I've been trying to do that twice a day. Go to weekday mass once a day. As a priest that's easy, right? I want to read prayerfully the Mass readings, and I'm going to read them for the coming Sunday. And I tried to do that in preparation for the homily, but I want to do that more intentionally in the coming year. And I want to spend 30 to 60 minutes once a week before the tabernacle in Eucharistic adoration. That's here in our church. My pattern is to do that upstairs in my sitting room. I like the quiet of there. But I want to sit in front of the Lord more intentionally and see what happens. I also want to go to confession at least four times each year. I normally do two or three, so I'm going to do a fourth one this year. And then I'm going to try to do something to overcome one sinful habit. And no, I'm not going to tell you what that is. But I'm going to work on something. Secondly, through ongoing faith formation, I put down uh, attend one adult faith program in our parish, and we have many. Um, my hope is myself personally to offer one more. I want to read something Pope Francis has written, and I've just begun reading his recent teaching on family life, and I want to continue to read that. I want to read a classic Catholic book, and I tend to do that naturally. I read a spiritual book, and then I read a novel, and I try to trade off, and I want to continue to do that. I do subscribe to a couple of Catholic uh, periodicals. I like to keep up to date. And read something written by one of the early church fathers. I'm more intrigued by them. So that's how I'm going to do my ongoing formation. And then on the back, through loving service, I want to pray for religious vocations, especially more intentionally from this parish. I'm going to clean out my closet and give away some of the excess. I try to do that about once a year, and I'm going to do that soon, and I give the excess to the bargain bin right over here. I also want to pray monthly for those who are incarcerated. 
Every Saturday morning, we have a team that goes to our county jail. They spend an hour with the men, an hour with the women. Um, I want to pray more intentionally for those folks. And also, I want to do better to welcome newcomers to our parish. And I'm going to ask some of you to help me form a committee to do that. Uh, Bishop said he doesn't worry about money this first year. Um, I will tell you that uh, what I try to do is whatever I give to my parish, I try to give 10% of that to the diocese. This money goes to our bishop and his ministries. So if I do give money, where does it go? Especially it goes to youth ministry, higher ground and tech. I believe in those strongly. This money also goes to help bring priests from India to come and help us. One third of the priests serving in the Diocese of Grand Island are from India. Uh, without them, we'd be closing about 30 parishes. So this money helps to support those priests. We've had four of them here at St. Pat's. And also, some of this money goes to help uh, the retirement fund for our priests, the priest pension. So priests who have served us faithfully, this helps them to receive a pension every month so that they can live. After the sacrifice of their life, that's something we can do for them. So last year I gave over $2,000 to our parish. I'm going to try to give at least $200 to the bishop and his ministries. So I'm going to give this long to complete those cards. That's about 22 and a half seconds. Then we're going to pass those in. If you're still filling yours out, you can do that and put it in the collection basket. Um, our bishop has put a goal of saying 100% to the people in the diocese. And he has said he will respond to you personally. He wants to send you a letter back and thank you for making a commitment to let Jesus be your Lord. That's his concern. If my server would bring the basket down front. If you would, if you've completed, you can pass your card to someone on this end. And if someone on the end would please bring that forward. If one person over here would collect and maybe one person over here collect, and you can bring those forward at this time and we'll send them to the bishop and then he will respond back to you. So let's bring those forward at this time, if you would.